on Super Sunday. We are hoping this one is quite the setup for that other game later tonight. We are in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We take a peek inside the Al McGuire Center. Expected capacity crowd inside. That's because the Yukon Huskies are in town to take on the Marquette Golden Eagles for the first time here in the regular season. We are so happy to bring you Big East women's hoops here on Fox and the updated look at the Big East standings. Connecticut and Marquette actually both dropped a game to Villanova this week. And Mar UConn still sitting in first place. Marquette in fifth in the Big East standings. So that takes us here to today. Welcome to Big East women's hoops here on Fox with the Maryland Hall of Famer, Christy Winter Scott. I'm Lisa Byington and Christy UConn again is going to be playing today shorthanded. Marquette in program history has never knocked off the Huskies. So that kind of makes this game a little bit interesting here today. Just a little bit intriguing, Lisa. I tell you what, for UConn, they have had nine different starting lineups this season. They have to learn how to play with that adverse situation that they have been dealing with over the course of time look at the players who are out today obviously Paige Becker she is on her way back but out today Desharm out Olivia Nelson Adota out but for Marquette this is a prime opportunity they are 12 and 1 here at home this is a prime opportunity for them to get a signature win on their resume as we are pushing forward towards March. And no time is better than right now. It's the best time. Starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Kristen Williams will be key. She's coming off a 20-point performance. Also played 40 minutes in that DePaul game, the second straight game that she did that. AZ Fudd back in the starting lineup, the fourth start of her career. And for Marquette, Lauren Van Cloonen back for her fifth year. And you look at Carissa McLaughlin. And she's the Purdue transfer could be key here today. She could be key. She strokes at 45% from range. Look for her to get off. Oh. The second time of her career, the ball goes into the hands of McLaughlin. The second time of her career that she's taken on UConn. Did it one other time in a preseason tournament when she played for the Boilermakers. And she did not play well in that game. And she told us that at shoot around today that she wants to make up for that situation years ago. Murata takes it inside, and the first bucket and first points goes Marquette's way. UConn started in man-to-man -man defense, and what Marquette did to offset that, cut and move, set good, solid screens. It was a back screen that opened up to that weak side. Fudd gives it up. Nika Buell misses her first attempt. Talking to Gina Oriema, he thinks Buell, during this time when UConn is playing shorthanded, that she could be the one leader that can kind of help them bring them through this tough, tough stretch for the Huskies. Absolutely. It's all about consistency right now, and he was talking about that. Hey, we can't, we don't know who's going to be playing and how they're going to be playing in terms of their minutes. So you have to take advantage of any opportunity that you have on the floor. Well, case in point, Olivia Nelson Adoto was scratched as the starting lineups were being introduced in that Villanova game. There's a good hard take and a nice start. Jordan King gets it and a nice start for Marquette. Yeah, strong take to the basket. And that's what Marquette has done early on, getting downhill, getting to the rim. And that's how they practice today. There's a look for Fudd, and she knocks it down. Boy, she can shoot the distance shot, can't she? Listen, I've seen her since she was a tiny tot playing in the boys' league back in Northern Virginia, knocking down that same triple, and we saw that first shot go down for her in that Tennessee game as well. <laughs> she hit six more of them After in the that. Tennessee game for a career-high seven three-point makes in her first career start against the Lady Falls. You see Gina Oriema. He, he talked to us in the pregame, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat happy, actually, with the place that we're in now, even dropping the game this week to Villanova and considering the, the key players that we showed you that they're going to be without this game here today. For, for Gina Oriema to say, I'm somewhat happy, <laughs> is a big deal. It's a big deal because he knows that the extra minutes that this is affording other players with key players out, they're going to be stronger in the long run. Stepping into it, Liza Carlin gets her first bucket. And so we've got three different Marquette players who have a basket to begin with. That's where Liza Carlin loves to operate, right in that elbow area. She has a nice soft touch from there. But good job by Marquette early to identify where they want to score. Dorka Juhas gets hacked. I mean, she was in between a Golden Eagle sandwich. <laughs> and she'll take a trip to the free throw line. Dorka Juhas, a first team all Big Ten player the last couple of seasons, transferred from Ohio State. And Gino Ariema said she just fits perfectly with what they like to do. She's 6'5, can shoot the three, but as you saw right there, can be a threat in the paint as well. 
coming off a season high 22 points in the last game against DePaul. It was Aaliyah Edwards and Dorka Juhas who, who were key, and they, and they needed to be key. Coming off that Villanova loss, they got pounded on the boards. And they needed their post players to step up in the next game. They did exactly that. Yeah, she had 22 points in that game, and they need that kind of production from her today. No question about it. She also missed a couple of games with a foot injury. So no one has been playing all season long for UConn. Everyone has been out. Here's McLaughlin. And that was a zone look defensively, a 2-3 by the Huskies. McLaughlin starts out 0 for 2 here in this game, and Fudd knocks it down 2 for 2 there from back there. Yeah, it was the same offensive action, AZ Fudd coming from that weak side screen, curling and lifting. Yeah, almost the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. She said both her three-point makes. Tough shot for Van Clunen. And that's the first miss from two-point territory for Marquette to begin with. They're 0 for 3 from distance here so far. UConn loves that chin action in transition. A little handoff on the wing. Kristen Williams with the triple try. The lefty, the senior, the stabilizing force. Last year for UConn, she was the X Factor. This season with all the injuries and all the people in and out of the lineup, she has been the factor. McLaughlin knocks it down. Looked good. Squared up to the basket. Knocked it down. Nothing but net. And she missed her first two. Didn't shy away from that next shot and the opportunity to get that one to drop. They ended a 7-0 run here for UConn. Two-point edge. Here's Juhas. That's a long two. Well, I tried to tell you, Dorka Juhas can stretch the floor. She shoots 30% from three, even though her toe was on the line for that long two. But... And what that does, if she is out there, even if she doesn't shoot it, you have to honor that, and that creates gaps to attack. Pace has already been fun to watch here at the beginning of this first quarter between both of these teams. Murata, baseline take, and she's got four points here to begin with. Strong, aggressive moves to the rim. That's what Gino Ariema told us before the game. Marquette is tough on the perimeter and super physical. And a walking violation, so we'll head back the other way. Leah Edwards shuffled her feet a little bit too much. Watch right here. The drive to the bucket. Help side, not there. And that's what Marquette needs to continue to do. Attack the paint until adjustments are made. Fatu, Sissoko, Stevens, Crystal, Apollanas, and Rod Creech are your officials here for this afternoon. Four. Paint, paint points. Marquette has the advantage. Christie, 6 nothing. And that, almost that same spot for McLaughlin, not there that time. We were going to say the same thing about those paint points, and that's what they need to do. They need to continue to take those high percentage shots. Williams trying to lay it off with her offhand that time, her right hand. On the push, here comes Marquette. Moving a little bit, stepping into it, about a 15 feet out, and Carlin knocks it down. Carlin loves that shot, especially from the trail position. Double team came down there on Van Clunen. Great read out of that. How about that handoff? Neil was looking for it. They cut her off. Here's a look for Edwards. That one rims out. Edwards just needed to put that one on the glass, especially when you're in traffic. You don't know what kind of body balance you're going to have, so you have to have that backboard as your friend in the paint. Carlin got knocked there a little bit. We play on. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Jordan King gets bounced by Mule. That'll be her first. The well, threes have been wild a little bit here for UConn to begin with, Christy Winterscott. UConn knocking it down. AZ Fudd, same shot, same spot from three. She gets those to drop, but Marquette, they have been dominating in the paint. On Wednesday, UConn was stunned by Villanova ending the Huskies' 169-game win streak over conference opponents. The streak snapped over nine years, two conferences, the American Athletic and the Big East. Villanova's first win over UConn since 2004. There have been some streaks when you're talking about the Connecticut Huskies there for sure. They rebounded again on Friday with a win against DePaul, but, but these are the UConn loss Wednesday against Villanova 
It ended that, that conference win streak against opponents. The first loss since 2013. I mean, look at look at all this. Five losses in a season for the first time since 2010 and, and 2011. And it's just, I mean, pages and pages to illustrate the excellence that this UConn program has been. I mean, it's silly, right, when you look at it. And I mean that in the most complimentary way. I mean, UConn has just been so dominant over the years. They haven't lost back-to-back -back games since 1993, people. 1,044 games where they haven't lost back-to-back -back contests. I mean, that is sustainability of excellence. And as of right now, that will continue because I mentioned they picked up the win on Friday right. against DePaul after they lost on Wednesday. At the Al McGuire Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Christy Winter scott Lisa Byington with you. The number eight UConn Huskies up against a Marquette team with capacity crowd here at the Al McGuire Center. And a three-second violation, so a turnover here for the Golden Eagles. UConn did a good job there in their matchup zone, just staying with things, playing up the line. Megan Duffy talking to us in the shoot around here today talking about how we're going to be able to take care of the basketball offensively and find ways to score against this UConn defense. You know, one that she played for the great Muffet McGraw, and that's one thing that Muffet keeps telling her every time she plays UConn. How are you going to score? And now back-to-back -back turnovers for this Marquette offense. And they're just so long and lanky and have great instincts when it comes to anticipation skills. Again, and that's the challenge. Yeah, Vina Westbrook gets the bucket for the two-point edge here for the visitors. Nice pass, good catch, good post up that time from Carlin. I think that was a miscue defensively by UConn. They're playing a matchup zone, so when the cutters go through, there's a bump off, and good job by Marquette to identify that moment to attack. These two teams faced each other three times last year. And so the last time that they faced each other is Aaliyah Edwards, that one popping out. The last time they faced each other before today was the Big East Championship game last year at Mohegan Sun. UConn held Marquette to 39 points in that championship game. And it's all about defense. These are the two better defensive teams in the Big East. Van Clunen, that's another long two just inside the three-point arc. Van Clunen is so consistent with her effort. We asked her about that today after practice, and she said she takes pride in bringing consistent effort every day. So boys and girls, listen to that when you're playing and learning. And we'll stay here. Well, UConn, we've talked about those defense. How are you going to score against this UConn defense? Well, first of all, you can't turn it over. Well, you cannot turn the basketball over like this in live ball situations where UConn can pay it off on the other side. Westbrook finishing right at the rim. Westbrook drops it off to Juhas. Just a little bit off to the left. Dorka Juhas averaging about seven points, six rebounds in her first year playing for UConn. Turn around. And a good challenge that time defensively by Juhas. That was really good. She didn't break the plane. Oh, but the, the no look, she looked it off, but Juhas couldn't pay it off. Beautiful look, though, by Nika Mule. She just had a tough angle. She was almost underneath the rim, and that's hard to get a full flick of the wrist when you're stuck in that position. Inside two minutes here in the first quarter, McLaughlin with a nice look. That's that pure shooting mm. stroke that she's shown off in West Lafayette. I was trying to tell you at the beginning, 45% from range for McLaughlin. And she is just so tough when she gets her feet set. All she needs is a little body bump, a little rub off screen, and she's free. Pulling up. Fun. It's not there from 15 feet out. Marquette on an 11-2 run looking to add to it. Carlin has found some success there on the post all of a sudden. She's not just a face-up from the mid-post area. Ooh, that was just tough. Nice body control on the reverse. It was contested as well. Tough make. She's got eight points to lead all scorers here right now. That's about right at her game average, by the way, in a 13-2 Marquette run. Crossover for Williams, that hesitation. One rim and out. Westbrook, offensive rebound, gets it out to Fudd. About that crossover. Williams checks her feet from the wing. She knocks down the triple try. A tight crossover. 
drawing defenders to the paint. Smooth kick out to Williams for the lefty triple. About a six second differential. Marquette patient, initiating the offense. McLaughlin coming off that screen. They got Van Clunen moving a little bit, trying to free up McLaughlin on the baseline. All she had to do was stabilize. And I tell you, if she just stood there and let the defender come to her body instead of leaning, trying to connect to it, she would have been safe. And McLaughlin acted in again as well. Yeah, Van Clunen, though, that's two personals now for her. So she'll sit out for the final few seconds, certainly, of this first quarter. And then you got to ask yourself, how long will she sit out after this? Westbrook from three. Boy, UConn has been good from back there in the first quarter. UConn's fifth three-point make, and they end the first quarter on a 6-0 run. Westbrook so tough right there. Only a 29% three-point shooter, but she got that one to go. UConn choking it from deep and playing some staunch defense. Marquette coming at him. Definitely an entertaining first quarter here between Marquette and UConn. Oh. Even kept this little one away. <laughs> Love it. A one-point edge here for the Golden Eagles and Christy Winter Scott. Both of these teams went at it a little bit differently offensively. Marquette finding success. Points in the paint. No babying on the court for Marquette when it comes to dominating the paint right now. A 10-2 advantage. Scoring the ball inside and on the other side for UConn. They have been knocking in their threes, but you got to have good passes to get to good shots. Five of seven from range for UConn coming into this game as a team shooting 32% from there. Right now, 71% from and you, three. You mentioned five of seven from three, but all seven of their buckets from two land and three land have been assisted here so far this afternoon. And you love to see that kind of continuity and connectivity on the offensive end. That's what I was saying. You have to have great passes to get to great shots. But on the first play of the second quarter, gets her own miss, kicks it out. Eight or 16 seconds to work with here for UConn. Westbrook from mid-range, short. Good job boxing out there by Marquette, not allowing a third opportunity to get a shot off for UConn. Kennedy Biles, a transfer from Illinois, has checked in. Played the first few minutes of the second quarter here for Marquette. King takes a peek inside. Carlin was kind of calling for it, trying to post up Westbrook. Now seven to shoot. Crossover there from King, lays it up with the right hand for two. More pay points. Go to what is feeding you well. And it has been scoring right in front of the rim like that, being deliberate and intentional about where you're going to attack, how you're going to attack as well. Look at that. 12 of their 23, about half of their points have come inside the paint. Mule gets another opportunity here for the Huskies. Uaz, how about that back cut? Nicely done for the layup. Perfectly placed pass by Westbrook as well. But you've got to cut and move especially when there are plays that are broken down like that, and that's what Gina Arima said as well. Oh, Westbrook nearly had a clean pick, trying to step in the passing lane. When in doubt, rip and go. Right here, you're going to see another strong attack and finish in the paint. And then nice hard cut by Dorka Juhas. Defense got caught, ball watching. And Juhas was able to slip behind for the easy finish. McLaughlin, just above the break. She's got the, the one Marquette three-point make here so far this afternoon. To possession that time for the Golden Eagles on the push. Here comes Mule, using that screen from Juhas. Williams to Juhas, working around. Good ball movement that time from UConn. A really good defensive rotation there. Just closed down the lane. Marquette has done a tremendous job with that, which is why UConn is taking those outside shots. They can't find the crevices to attack in the paint yet. Eight of their 22 shots come from three-point territory here so far. McLaughlin, deep attempt. And she's one for four from back there. 
but not fooled on the hesitation, and UConn forces another turnover. Just not matching angles there. King was on the high side, needed to fake it to that high side and drop it on the low side. That's where the angle was to make that pass complete. Four turnovers here so far for Marquette. Juhas getting stripped, quick hands that time for Miles. McLaughlin this time taking it inside, high off the glass for two. Getting downhill has been the M.O. in this first half for Marquette. And they lead the Big East in field goal percentage defense, 37% coming into this game. So they have done it on the defensive end in terms of being where they need to be. Again, it goes back to what Megan Duffy told us. How are you going to score against this UConn defense? Juhas, 4-3. And she's got her first three-point make. She's tried a couple of them here this afternoon. 30% shooter from there. you got to find her. Get into that shooting pocket with a high hand and a stick arm. Not a high volume of three-point makes for the season for Juhas. Just number nine coming in here. For the season, McLaughlin. McLaughlin said that she measures herself against great competition. So you can kind of see her really stepping up to the challenge of this home game. Marquette is 12 and 1 here at home. But not hesitating. Juhas, the offensive rebound. Edwards trying to battle for it. Tied at 25. Here come the Golden Eagles. Antoinette Walker from the wing to McLaughlin. And King working off that screen. That's another two. And we have a jump ball coming up. It'll be Marquette basketball. And we said that Marquette was a staunch defensive team. And what they have done, they have really manufactured a lot of great offensive opportunities from their strong defense. They have been able to push tempo, push pace. McLaughlin right there getting right inside that restricted area on the offensive side to kiss it off the glass. King takes a peek at the shot clock. She takes the handoff, crossover with six on the shot clock. It'll go back the other way. King saying, hey, I got hats. Let's take a look at the defensive effort on that possession. Watch right here. She's going to try to switch it and get downhill, and there was some, some contact there. But it looked like it was on the ball. Yeah, yeah. I think Fudd got a lot of ball on that. Good defensive play by the freshman. Number one overall recruit in the country. Here is Fudd. Oh, it went off the fingertips. I think that was one of the cases where Avina Westbrook was thinking about what she wanted to do before she received the basketball. And you can't do that. You have to see the basketball into your hands the same way Gino just saw his eyes drop to the floor when that turnover happened. I mean, it's frustrating because it's unforced, and unforced errors cost you down the stretch of games. Still tied at 25. Inside five minutes here before the half. No whistle. And so Marana had kind of a free play. She knocks it down. She's got six. And if she hadn't picked up her dribble, she probably could have gone all the way to the rim. But she said, hey, I don't have a dribble. Nobody's open. My guy fell down. I'm shooting. Like the flow of this game, it's been fun. A little bit back and forth. We got a foul underneath the basket on Walker. That'll be her first. Well, Marquette sitting pretty right now at home because they have been in attack mode. Man down. Shot good. We've got some Milwaukee royalty in the house. Shaka Smart, the men's Marquette basketball coach, taking in this one, as well as Craig Council, Brewers manager. Smile on his face. Both of them pleased with the performance here so far with Marquette. And both of them maybe applauding this play by the Golden Eagles. Absolutely. I mean, Marquette has just been magnificent in this first half. Watch right here. Marissa McLaughlin has the ball on the wing, and she's going to drive it right into the red zone, right into the middle of the paint, and finish. No help. 
Nobody collapsed from that weak side to contest it. So she continued on and finished it. When we talked to Carissa McLaughlin, she said, you know, I, I said, have you played UConn when you were at Purdue? And she immediately said, yeah, I played them my sophomore year. We were in the Virgin Islands, a preseason tournament, and I shot one for 11. <laughs> like, she knew that stat right at the top of her head. Oh. She didn't even know I was going to ask her that no. question. No, that was in that was in her uh, in her memory banks for sure. And she probably knew what time the game was as well. We should have asked her that. <laughs> What date? That's right. Players don't forget things. You know, she said, I really get frustrated when we have good opportunities against top competition and I didn't perform well at all in that game and I just stung after the game to sit and reflect on my performance. So today she has flipped the switch and has really come out strong for Marquette. She's actually got two more baskets than she had the first time she took on UConn. She's got three baskets here today. Murata trying to get that pass. Here is McLaughlin from the wing. And UConn coming down with it. Easy thought initiating the offense. Back-to-back -back games earlier this week. She had 20-point games set. A couple of career highs against Tennessee and against Villanova. And that Tennessee game, she had 25 points, 29 against Villanova. In a loss, though, and it was just down the stretch where they just didn't do what they needed to. Fun too strong on that attempt. for six shooting right now here for the freshman AZ Fudd. And Gino said hey, she's not 100% either. I mean, she, a lot of players, Dorka Juhas, we said, missed two games with a foot injury. I mean, a lot of players have been in and out of this lineup. Nine different starting lineups for UConn this season so far. Carla, nowhere to go. Juhas challenging. Yeah, I mean, the story with UConn this year is not who they necessarily not always who they have on the court but who they don't have on the court exactly and then sometimes who they have on the court but who's healthy mm -hmm. and how healthy they are with the players who are playing well eight of 12 players have missed at least two games this season you that's another deep two we had a chance to talk to her in the pregame right and she talked about i am so happy and, and, and she found all kinds of success at ohio state but it seems like she's found her niche a little bit she said she loves it, and that's, you know, you want to be happy and at peace with yourself as a student athlete. Edwards was trying to chase that down, battling with Carlin. We got a kick ball, and so we'll stay here. I mean, eight of 12 players have missed at least two games. You see Ducharme there on the left, Beckers in the middle, Nelson Adota there on the right. You know, Chino was actually interesting in, in talking about maybe the return of Paige Beckers mm -hmm. and saying that I think she's still going to play this year. Here's the pick. Westbrook taking it all the way for two. And, and going to that point, so does Paige Beckers. I mean, she, <laughs> she was out here shooting and, and knocking in threes, you know, with the brace on her leg. You know she's ready to come back. And it's all about being cleared, obviously, by the medical staff. But she had an exam on the 6th of February. And she is on track and doing what she needs to do to get back on the floor. And wow, if they get her back right before the tournament, mm. the NCAA tournament, that's going to change a lot of things for the Huskies. Not many people can get the national player of the year back in rotation. We talked about how she wants to be back as of today, as of yesterday, as of probably like three <laughs> days ago. This was her in the pregame. She's got that brace there on the left knee, but she was knocking down three-point shots and, and looking pretty good. Well, she's got that brace, but she's got the bug. You can see it in her eyes. Look at her. She wants to be back on the floor so badly. And her body is is getting ready to get her back out there, too. This is all that she did in her <laughs> freshman year. Kind of one, two, three, four player of the year honors. And of course, being the top point guard, the Nancy Lieberman Award. Was that page one of that? Because I know in the, in the media guide and page in one the, of a volume of many <laughs> chapters to that story that is so young. And she's only in her still being season. Yeah. She's, she's a baby. Yeah, that's.
that's that's year number one. And, oh, and, and by the way, when you got the player of the year, the reigning player of the year in the house, you are a celebrity, not only to UConn fans, but got to get your selfies with the Marquette fans, too. Listen, I'm going over there after the game. I'm going to get myself a selfie, too, with Paige Beckerson. Listen, back in the day, like a couple years ago, my daughter played with AZ Foot AAU and Paige and AZ great friends. And we went to a tournament, and all of the little girls just crowded her, and that's before she even set foot on the campus at UConn. And, I mean, it's so great for the game. I was the photographer. Carlin drops that one in. She got all the, the different parts of the rim on that bucket. And, and I hope that you didn't uh, fold in the moment being Paige Becker's photographer. No, I loved it. I was reveling in it. I was like, no, everybody get over there. You know, I had a nice little shot of everyone. I could see you it doing was, that. It, it was just beautiful for the game. Offensive foul call, a moving screen that time on Aaliyah Edwards. That's number, uh, sorry, on Nika Mule. That will be number two on Mule. Let's take a look and see. See, it's a sliding and making contact there on the screen. You have to be set and established. Down to 29. Largest lead in this game has been seven points. Taking it hard to the rack. Carlin with the cut. Hard cuts. That's what Megan Duffy was talking about today. And can I just tell you Megan Duffy's energy as a coach? I wanted to get my shoes. I was looking for shoes under the table. She was saying we have to dive hard. We have to make good passes. And that's what they did on that last possession. We'll stay here. Well, 12 points now for Liza Carlin after this bucket. Once right here, you've got to take a hard cut. And not, you're not just running a play. You're playing basketball. You are taking the opportunity that is given to you, and you're going to go hard to go get it. UConn has 6.6 .6 to work with. Carlin is the, the game's leading scorer with those 12 points. Here's Juhas from the top. She could go off the bounce, sweat side, ties it at 31. Really good half of basketball by both teams, and we'll see who can fight for their will in the second half. 12 points for Juhas. I mentioned the 12 points for Carlin. Those are your leading scorers here at the half. Halftime here in Milwaukee coming up after the break. Big East basketball is sponsored by Chief. There's only one. You know, I thought the first half was really entertaining, but the uh, the halftime show was equally as entertaining. Being a dog lover, loved watching that. So good. They've done it in different ways here offensively. You see the points in the paint advantage from Arquette, a plus 10 advantage, and the six three-point makes for the UConn Huskies, and that is where we are tied at 31. Big East women's basketball here on Fox. The Maryland Hall of Famer, Christy Winter-Scott, and I'm Lisa Bynes. And, and, and Christy, in a game like this, let's see, we got four lead changes, six ties. When we've got a couple of X factors, one on each side, they're playing above their averages. Liza Carlin and Dorka Juhas, who are leading the way here in the first half. Both have 12 points. And both have been dominating forces for their respective squads. And Dorka Juhas has really been the one that has gone crazy for UConn right now with her 12 points. She's 5 of 9 from the floor, 1 of 2 from 3 in her 17 minutes of play. And she has been magnificent on the outside, knocking in shots for the Huskies. And on the other side for Marquette, Carlin has been all the time good in the paint. She has just been eating. Efficient. She only averages nine points and seven boards on the season. Right now, she's sitting at 12 points and five rebounds after only 17 minutes of play in that first half. Well, we mentioned you, Haas, and Carlin are leading the way here with the 12 points. You know, they average about somewhere around like seven or eight here for both of them here for the season. Uh, followed by McLaughlin, who's three of nine shooting, looking for her shot. And Avina Westbrook kind of getting some points off of transition here in the first half. And Westbrook has gotten hers off of deflections and live ball turnover situations, turning that into easy transition buckets on the other side. McLaughlin on the transition look a little bit too strong, but another opportunity here for Marquette. But I like the fact that she's still taking shots. She is staying aggressive, getting right into her shooting pocket, getting her feet set to pull seven to shoot now five to work with stepping into it 
Van Cloonen, who had picked up those two personals, here begins the second half. In fact, it's the same starters here in the second half that began this game for both of these teams. Mule takes a look. That was just off the mark. It was a good shot within their offensive movement. So you're not disappointed in that because you know what you can get, but they've got to knock those shots in to Mule. keep Marquette at bay. Mule hasn't scored yet here tonight. Well, today, I should say, 0 for 3 here to begin with. Van Clunen, that's a long two. Van Clunen is just so tough. 48% shooter from the floor. 16 points and 8 boards, 3 assists last week. Those were her numbers. She is just a, a force to be reckoned with. And you've got to face her. You've got to get out there and contest shots. Newhouse had her foot on the line, so that was another long two. On the push, Murata kicks it out. And they give a touch now to Van Clunen again. King is short. Van Clunen does such a good job of staying composed in the double team. There's the freshman, Easy Fudd, looking to create. That was all Easy Fudd on that possession. Absolutely. Great read. She just has great mechanics and skill set when it comes to decision making. Gino Arima said she's so smart. And she's not just a scorer for us, she does other things. So, Dushawn and Beckers cheering her on. I, I was watching Paige Beckers in, in, in halftime and just moments before we began the second half. Beckers came over to her buddy, AZ Fudd, and they had a couple of words. And that's the most impactful that Paige Beckers could be right now, still out. And it's another bucket for you, Hawks. Well, they have a really strong connection, and that's a big reason why AZ Fudd chose to attend UConn because of that. Yuhas is stringing together a couple of good back-to-back -back games. A season-high 22 that she had in the last game against DePaul. And she's leading the team right now with 14 points, 6 of 11 shooting. DePaul right now is in a struggle at Georgetown, down one in the fourth quarter. Yuhas again. She had nine of her 11 points in the second quarter here before the half. We're giving her some touches here to begin this second half. Let's see if Marquette can get a two-man game going. They've done such a good job setting screens. Here's one right there by Carl. King takes it and pulls up from about 15 feet out. But when in doubt, take a hard cut or set or use a screen. Get yourself going. Sometimes you have to break a play, and that's not a play call. That's basketball. Just create your own spacing with screening actions. King lost her footing. Here's Juhas again. She's had the hot hand. That one's not there. And Megan Duffy said how important it would be to run sets all the way through, make UConn work defensively. King left all alone as Edwards was late on the closeout, and King makes some pay. Van Clunen hitting the ground with two hands. She said she gets that from Megan Duffy, who brings that level of energy to the table every day. That's a two for Williams. She was straddling the three-point line. Edwards with the offensive rebound and put back. To a finish inside by Edwards, using her body well to ward off the defense that was pushed and wedged in under the rim. That's her first points here today. She's coming off the season-high 19 against DePaul. McLaughlin. Hasn't found one yet in the second half. Neal working off the screen with Juhas. Gives it up to Williams. Took a peek inside to Juhas. 14 to shoot. Williams. Change of speed. And lefty stroke going baseline with that little step back. Nice patience on that offensive possession by UConn. And Kristen Williams, I mean, she is going to be relied heavily upon for her offensive production down the stretch here until bodies can get back on the floor for the Huskies. And Kluna not there. Williams with the rebound. Well, Williams the last five games has led the team, to your point, Christy, with 17 points per game average. And she's had three games this season where she scored more than 20 points. So she needs one of those kinds of performances this afternoon. Double figure scoring in every game against the Notre except the Notre Dame game. She's short on that attempt.
crossover from McLaughlin. Staying deliberate. You see they're going through every single action in their offense. Carlin's career high is 20 points against Creighton earlier this season. She is right at that, almost right now with this and one opportunity after we come back. In the pregame, in, in the fact that the hunger of, of those four teams, and we see it here again today, which he was expecting against this Marquette team. Absolutely. DePaul, Villanova, Marquette, Creighton treating every game that they're playing from here on out like an NCAA tournament game. As they should, because it's their opportunity. This is Marquette's opportunity here at home where they have a 12-1 and record this season. And this is their opportunity within the conference to get that statement win for their resume headed into March. And all four of those teams have that same mindset. AC Fudd, what a move. She was going right, spun back left for the lay-in. Well, I've seen it before. She's from the DMV. I mean, she can just be mesmerizing offensively. But as Gina Ariema said, if her shot's not falling, she does so many other things well on the court. Said that this is about the healthiest she has been, maybe in the last three games, as Aaliyah Edwards trying to chase that one down. She hasn't been 100% all season long, but this was an A++ move. Yeah, this is 100% right here. AZ Fudd reading, wheeling, and dealing, and finishing right at the rim after she sized up the defense. She's so crafty. She knows what she's doing when she puts the ball on the floor. There are no aimless dribbles. She knows why she's putting it on the floor, because it's going to make you do this so she can do that. And King gets fouled that time. I think Fudd got her for her first. And, you know, we've talked about the hunger of uh, Marquette that we're seeing, Villanova, DePaul, Creighton. The Huskies have an, an eight-net ranking here coming into today. And, and let's be honest, you know, these Big East teams see an opportunity right now when they see a shorthanded UConn team. It, it doesn't it doesn't say hey you beat a shorthanded UConn team on your resume It says you beat the number eight net ranked team in the country And that's gonna be interesting when it comes down to selecting teams and what seed they're going to have if they consider that And I don't know if they will or if they're allowed to if they're permitted to do that But I think every team in the country has been missing players throughout this season for injury and illness well, you see the bump there from Jordan King. And just a reminder of, of the big names who are again out. Paige Beckers, of course, out with the, the left knee injury. You see Caroline Ducharme, who is out with what they're calling a non-concussion head injury. Olivia Nelson Adota still battling with that groin injury. Important, important pieces. They really expect all three of those players at some point to return here in the regular season. And Nelson Adota, a scratch right before that Villanova game. Like while they're introducing the starting yeah, line, I mean, by the she way. tried to warm up and said, I just cannot go. And that was her first time that she has ever missed a game in her career. And now this is her third game where she's off the court. Leads UConn, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, by the way. And listed still as day-to-day. -day. And Gina Arima told us, he said, we're missing her passing ability. Six on the shot clock. McLaughlin had to pull the trigger. Yeah, I thought that comment was interesting. You, you think defense sometimes mm -hmm. with Nelson Adota. He immediately brought up, you know, her passing ability, which I think sometimes is underrated for people who don't watch UConn play, maybe day in and day out. Of course. And he said Edwards and also Dorka Juhas, they're more aggressive on the offensive end, so it balances out. But pulls from the elbow, gets it right back. Thanks to the rebounding from here from Edwards and the reverse. She's going to get a couple free throws here coming up. Olivia Nelson Adota. Not 119. She was the Big East Defensive Player of the Year last year. And, and you mentioned the first few games that she missed in her career. 119 consecutive games. She had 55 straight starts. I mean, just an incredible force because the question to Gina was how does that impact you 
with what you want to do strategically on both sides of the floor. And he said, yes, we were talking about her passing ability, but don't forget how well she protects the rim. I mean, she is eighth in the history of the UConn women's basketball program and block shots with 244. So she cleans that area up. So if you have some bad defense up top or if you lunge and you're out of the play, she's going to be right there and have your back. They don't have that presence in there in her absence. You see on our graphic, Van Clunen has picked up her third personal, which sent Fudd to the, the free throw line. We got an offensive foul now for Marquette. And Marana picks up her first. Van Clunen's on the bench right now for the Golden Eagles with the third personal foul. Inside, two minutes left to play here in the third quarter. Fifth-year senior is going to have to watch maybe the last 151 left to play here in the quarter. Aaliyah Edwards, how about going up to get that one? And she's had a couple of, of looks she couldn't put away, and bodies went flying that time. Some frustration there for Edwards, who... She picked up her second. Got flipped right here. Just missed the bunny inside and got tangled up. Oh. Well, Carlin had her yeah. arm chicken wrapped wing. around. Yeah, she had the chicken wing. Both of them kind of dosy yep, yep, that. Yep, yep. <laughs> they both kind of, yeah. it's a great way to put it. Got tangled. And there they are again. How about Edwards stepping in the passing lane and King coming over and picking up the reach-in foul. So that could be like a little matchup there, getting a little testy between Edwards and Carlin. And King has picked up her second. Well, this game has huge meaning for both teams. You know, you're talking about this UConn team that we discussed. They haven't lost back-to-back -back games consecutively since 93, coming off a 24-point win against DePaul on Friday. They need to have some continuity. They need to build on that win and not go up and down and back and forth. Marquette, meanwhile, has never beaten UConn in program history. 0 for 12. Edwards, missing poorly on that. Here's the push from Walker. And Marquette will take its time. Trailing by one. Murata turned away. Finds an open McLaughlin, and that's usually true, and it is on that possession. McLaughlin knocks down her second three-point make, two of nine here this afternoon. A timely triple from the three-point striker, Carissa McLaughlin. There's Fudd with the take. Boy, she's playing like a vet, isn't she? She's so strong. That's not a freshman move. She's so strong. She knew she was going to get hit, but didn't care and leaned into that contact for the strong finish. Tied at 45. She's got 14. The tie with Juhas with her 14 on the UConn side. You nearly got a pick. Final few seconds here of the quarter. King turning the corner. She's inside the paint. Pop it. Headed in into the fourth quarter. Marquette looking for an upset here on their home court, and they've done it by attacking the paint, but they can also knock in triples. McLaughlin pure from the outside, and let's test the inside that has worked wonders for the Golden Eagles. Everybody sticking with us for the fourth. You know, we got a little game here coming up later today in honor of Super Bowl Sunday. Let's compare some championship resumes. We start with the L.A. Rams, of course. How about 85 seasons, one Super Bowl title? We get to the Bengals, 54 seasons. Still hunting on that one. How about Gene Oriana, though? Knocks them both out of the park. Hey, I like football. Football is good and everything. But, wow, Gino Oriana, 37 seasons, 11 titles. That's just excellence personified. I don't know if Gino played football. Maybe I should know that. I, I would guess he would be the quarterback, wouldn't you say? I mean, he'd be a, a shorter quarterback for sure. Yeah, but he probably has an arm on him, I think. Uh, I would think he, you know. Well, and yes, and the uh, <laughs> game management, right? That, <laughs> that he would have. Here's your score by the quarter. It's a two-point edge right now for Megan Duffy, who, as a player at Notre Dame, knows what it's like to beat UConn, but as a head coach, is 0 for 3 as the head coach at Marquette.
Faced UConn three times last year, including in the Big East Championship game. Marquette sitting at number five in the Big East coming into this one, and it's a log jam from one to five. How tight has this game been, especially in the third quarter? How about in the third quarter alone, six lead changes, five ties. In the game, we've got 10 lead changes and 11 ties. So sit in, and, and this is a nice kind of serve it up entree right before the Super Bowl later tonight. A little appetizer. Yuhas for three, and UConn has the lead right back. She's got 17. Dorker Yuhas. Just depend on her to come in when the team needs a momentum swing. When they need a bucket, they know that they can go to Dorka Yuhas inside or outside, and she'll come through. Her career high is 27. She got that against a Miami, Ohio team when she was playing for Ohio State. Van Clunen has checked back in with the three personal fouls, and she hits the baseline jumper to give Marquette the lead right back. Van Clunen staying active. Just six points for her right now in her 19 minutes. She has five boards as well, but I love that she's facing. She's not trying to pound and have her back to the basket. She's facing a thud from long two-point territory. Just clean. I mean, the mechanics on her shot, if you just watch how she rises and fires, it's, it's picturesque. UConn sitting in their 2-3 zone again. They've been mixing it up a little bit defensively. And that causes Marquette to get a timeout. Megan Duffy didn't like what she saw against that, so she calls a timeout to chat about it. How entertaining has this game been here so far? How about the lead changes and the ties? 13 of them, 11 ties here so far. Latest bucket, one of the latest buckets here for UConn coming off the, the pick and pop by one Dorka Juhas. Watch Dorka Juhas read this perfectly. AZ Fudd, great pass back out. You cannot go and dig in that far to help and lose sight of Dorka Juhas, who loves the pick and pop game. AZ Fudd recognized that and found her. Coming out of this Megan Duffy timeout, again, they find the hands of Van Clunen, blocked by time by Juhas. Juhas doing it all, getting it done offensively, but being disruptive on the defensive end, getting deflections and blocks as well for the Huskies. This time it's UConn with a little bit of patience. Changes speed there for Williams. She lays it off. That was with her offhand, by the way, on the right side. The Marquette switched on that screening action up top. And it was a mismatch, but Van Clunen, she was vertical and was right there to contest it. This is a tough mate shot inside. Double figures now for Kristen Williams. She's at 10. McLaughlin ran right into Juhas, turns it over. Hard hedge up top by Dorka Juhas causing some distractions. They hadn't been doing that, showing a hard hedge there on that screening action for Marquette. It's the 10th turnover here for the Golden Eagles. Megan Duffy trying to plead to her team for a strong defensive showing on this possession. Fudd is looking for it. That didn't hit the rim, but the shot clock didn't reset, so they got a pull. What a big bucket. That's a two by Westbrook. Big time shot by Westbrook from the wing. Six nothing run here for UConn. It's forced Megan Duffy to take another timeout. Well, everything has been predicated upon the defense by Dorka Juhas right here, contesting, blocking shots inside, corralling. And then right here, a nice hard hedge, sh shutting the door. Five-point edge is the largest lead so far in this game here for UConn. A capacity crowd here at the El McGuire Center. And it has been fun to watch here so far. Dorka Juhas has been fun to watch too, especially if you're a UConn fan. She's been efficient offensively and has made an impact defensively. She has been spectacular on both sides, really impacting the game in many ways, knocking in her threes. She's made two of those. The pick and pop game is on point for Dorka Juhas, but it's the defense for me. That's what Gino Ariema said that his team needed to bring to the table today.
They can make their shots. Okay, we'll get it. We've had droughts. Okay, I get it. But our defense cannot waver, and Dorka Juhas has been the anchor there. UConn and you and you Haas have executed much better in the fourth quarter comparatively speaking to Marquette four or five shooting and Marquette has coughed it up a couple of times as Murata draws the foul take a look at Kristen Williams trying to contest there on the drive and when you see that you've got to get to where they're going and I thought she almost did but she didn't round that right shoulder to square to the ball handler on that play Chloe Marana is a, a player for Marquette who's become a consistent starter really the last couple of years Last year as a junior, she started every game, and she started every game that she's played in this year as well. Three-point edge here for UConn. So Westbrook for three. And how about Mule chasing it down? It's a matchup zone by Marquette. Switching and bumping at the top. Yuha has joined the contact. And we'll see if they'll give her a couple of free throws or if it was made before the shot. Carlin has picked up her first, and she'll be a shooting foul. And sometimes what you want to do against the matchup zone is try to settle for outside shots. But no, you need to go ahead and get your shoulders back and get yourself to the rim and create some contact with the defense. Dorka Juhas, we told you we had a chance to talk to her in the pregame and, and how happy she is in making her decision to continue to play. Here as a, in her career as a Husky, she's got a couple of years here. She misses a big free throw there on the front end. But really hasn't, she's another one who hasn't been totally healthy. A right foot has limited her in practice since her arrival. And she splits the pair. We're toughing it out. I mean, we're in February now, so everybody has something that's not feeling 100%, but you give 100% of the 60% that you have. Juhas nearly got another block. Van Kloonen was testing. And that's her first. Dorka Juhas already has a block shot earlier in this game, and let's... Take a look at this particular attempt to block it. Ooh. Unless her left hand, I couldn't see it. See, look at her left hand wasn't vertical, and she tried to clear it at the last second. But it's best if you just either Michael Jordan-esque and put it behind you so you're not in the way of it and stay vertical. But if that other arm is folded up in there somehow, they think there's some body contact on the airborne shooter. Van Cleveland makes good on the second. A player, a graduate student, decided to come back for her fifth year, said she had unfinished business in trying to get this team back to the NCAA tournament. Partially blocked that time, Murata. I think Gino Arriama definitely wanted a foul on that. Two-player action between Murata and Van Cloonen, and she walked with it. Some costly turnovers, especially in the fourth quarter here for Marquette. The third one here in the quarter for the Golden Eagles. Lucan trying to stay disciplined with what they want to do on the offensive end. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a freshman. Yeah. 18 now for AZ Fudd. Get the ball to AZ Fudd. She is a clutch performer, whether it's at the beginning of the game or at the end of the game. When you need to manufacture quick offense, she's there to, to supply it. Juhas got a piece of that as well. Mule on the push. Fudd in the transition. Steps into it. Big time. Five points in the last couple of possessions for Fudd. Big time 
buckets for the youngster, AZ Fudd. But it starts again with the defensive energy and attention to detail. AZ Fudd gets her feet set, splashed it down for three. Fourth quarter has been huge in, in dictating maybe the direction this game's going to go. 15 to 5 advantage right now for UConn over Marquette. Well, they have poured it on on the defensive end. They have been disruptive. They have been up in passing lanes. They have hard hedged, forcing turnovers from Marquette and scoring on the other side of that. No empty possessions after their stops. Marquette has turned it over four times, which is one of the reasons why they only have a couple of field goal attempts here in the fourth quarter. Carlin looking inside. And King will pull up. Just the third field goal attempt of the quarter for Marquette. And that was not a clean look. That was a look like we need to score. Let me try this shot. And you can't do that right now. They have done a good job, Marquette has, of setting and using good screens. They didn't get that on that possession. Westbrook, how about Fudd from the other side? Clutch! It says freshman on her class and her year, but she's playing like a junior and a senior and upperclassman down the stretch. In her heart, she is, and she is so smart. And I told you she had the clutch gene. I've seen it. I'm not surprised. I mean, some people may say, oh, wow, I'm surprised this young kid. No, she is built differently, and now an 8-0 run for UConn because of it. Mule nearly had a pick. That's her third for Nika Mule. Well, it's give the ball to AZ Fudd and get out of the way time for UConn. And the bench knows it. High tens all the way down. Fudd's got the last eight points for UConn. Inside three and a half minutes now left to go in the game. Westbrook, big pick. Looking to take it all the way. And the two in the largest lead here for UConn. They keep pouring it on in the fourth. Defense has been the difference maker. Clear and flat out. That's the bottom line in this quarter. There was a point in the fourth quarter where their largest lead of the game was five points. Now it's a double figures thanks to a 10 up and run. It's the only time that this has happened in this game here for UConn. And it's coming here in the final quarter. A big run. And Marquette hasn't had any answers. It's a shot clock violation. Well, it has been all about the defense here down the stretch. Westbrook in gaps, getting deflections and easy money in transition. Uh-oh, it's over. Paige Beckers is is going ahead and calling this with 2.39 to go, Lisa. Someone's going to make that a gift. You just <laughs> that watch. That should be. <laughs> that should be. Back to our luck. Westbrook for two. Now it's getting easy for UConn. Setting and using great screens off ball. And maybe Paige Beckers is right, and she's saying it again that, that it's over. I mean, that's a huge run. Avalanche of offense. Megan Duffy calls the timeout. 2.22 left. 15-point edge just like that. If you're just tuning in, you might think, oh, well, UConn has had a double-digit lead this whole game. It has been nip and tuck until the fourth quarter. And one of the reasons AZ Fudd, the freshman, has come up big time in some of the clutch moments in the fourth. AZ Fudd has been spectacular down the stretch. She has the clutch gene we have told you before. This is not a surprise. This freshman is built differently. Her picturesque form on her shot is just something to marvel at. AZ Flood with 24 points now for the Huskies. A 12 0 run in the last three minutes and 18 seconds for that team right there. Meanwhile, Marquette, six turnovers in the fourth quarter. And the first half points, six. She had a couple of three point makes in the first half and 15 points for her 21 game tally. Now she's cold blooded. And that's how she's, she's played. Her mom, Katie Smirka Duffy, played at both the NC State and Georgetown. She was Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. Katie was. But AZ Flood, the youngest Gatorade Player of the Year honoree, is only a sophomore at St. John's College High School in D.C. 
Bufflin gets turned away and stepped on the baseline for another turnover. That's seven turnovers here in the fourth. And 15 turnovers overall. Connecticut has scored 21 points off of turnovers, and that has been the difference in this contest. Williams from up top for three. And Van Clunen chases it down. A shorthanded UConn team missing three key players. Responding in the fourth and final quarter. Here's Carlin, short. Another opportunity. Murata chases it down. UConn, they may be shorthanded, but they're not short-hearted. They have played tough in this fourth quarter in particular. It's good that time for Jordan King. This kind of situation is, is even unique to Gino Oriema. There's not many things that he has not seen in his coaching career, and, and he admitted that, that this could be one of them. Right. The kinds of players that they've lost to lose a player of the year at Paige Beckers. Pump fake. Westbrook in for two. Body bucket and one. And a cherry on top there for the Huskies. Westbrook wheeling and dealing. Slicing and dicing down inside with the up and under, creating contact. Watch right here, hard cut again from the elbow. Found success with that play. And then getting the defense off balance right there. Excuse me, I'm going the other way and kissing it off the glass with contact. <laughs> to Gino's point, he wanted to stress he has lost key players before. So Paige Beckers in that way is not new, but you know, he goes back to the year of 2001. Svetlana Abrosimova was lost in February because of a torn ligament in her left foot. Then following that in March, don't remember, Shea Ralph yeah. was done for the year. And he said the difference in, in that year was I had some freshman by the name of Diana Taurasi to come off the bench for me. She started 14 games that year out of 33, and, and the rest is history for her. Yeah, absolutely. Just uncharted waters. And I think everybody can say that the last couple of years with everything going on, but for Gino to say that, and then, you know, to have a player like Diana Taurasi, only a freshman, to come in and play right away because of those injuries, it served them well because she was able to gain that experience. And then the freshman of the year that year in the Big East was not Diana Taurasi, it was one Rebecca Brunson. So that's a little Big East nugget for I you this Big afternoon. East. You stumped me on that one in the pregame. But he brought up that year. You know, he's made 13 consecutive trips to the Final Four. So he's seen a lot of success, but he brought up that year as maybe being the closest year in terms of missing some of the, the key players down the stretch. Now, the difference is that he could get some of those key players back, which he didn't get, obviously, in 2001. He Absolutely. lost them for the year. Absolutely. Mule with the kick out to Juhas and the three, and a little pump. And that has been the kind of afternoon for Dorka Juhas. She's got 21. 22 last game, 21 this game. Dorka Juhas becoming an invaluable piece of offensive production for UConn. Nearly identical shooting numbers and offensive numbers for Juhas and Fudd. And a bucket in the final few seconds here for Marquette. That will do it. Golden Eagles put up quite the fight for a capacity crowd here in Milwaukee at the Al McGuire Center. Fourth quarter points, though, the difference. And the fourth quarter was the difference. UConn, 27 to 11, outscoring Marquette in that quarter.